Hello guys and gals, and <laughs> welcome. I started whistling my own uh, theme song there, or uh, intro intro music. Um, today we're going to be looking at the Wraith Flight unique throwing item. Uh, for some reason or another, this one got completely left off my list, or maybe I recorded it and just never uploaded it, which seems to be a thing with me because I am a spaz brain. But that's okay. Today we're going to be going over the Wraith Flight, because why not? Uh, the Wraith Flight is a unique Ghost Glaive, which is an elite level item, and uh, it does mean that it cannot be upgraded. Um, the Ghost Glaive is always ethereal, um, and this is important because that means that you cannot find it in its non-ethereal form. You may have actually been wondering why I only had one. Well, the answer to having only one is because it only drops one way. Um, if you ever find this, you will find it ethereal because that's how it's designed. Um, it is a Ghost Glaive, and it does 130 to 368 throw damage, which is pretty darn good. It does 81 to 261 one-handed damage, uh, which means you can use it for poking things. Uh, it does have a decent durability of 120 to 120, uh, which is, of course, because recently they did an upgrade on all the uh, throwing class items, and they increased the uh, quantity size of throwing class items. Uh, we also have a dexterity requirement of 127 and a strength requirement of 79, uh, which is not bad, actually, and it's actually pretty low for one of these items. Um, I've seen these go a lot higher in the dex and strength requirements than these. Uh, we also have level 76 requirement, which does posture this more toward an endgame character. So it's definitely going to be an endgame level item. Uh, so keep that in mind as you're looking at it. Now, um, the Ghost Glaive has some pretty interesting mechanics, and uh, I think you will find that this could actually, theoretically, make a very fine addition to your Javazon's repertoire. Uh, hear me out. So, um, right off the bat, you'll notice that it does have a relatively slow speed of only normal attack speed, and since it cannot be socketed and you cannot put anything in it, this is a rather big downside. So, unfortunately, the Ghost Glaive does not shoot very fast, and it can't throw it very fast, and it doesn't attack very fast either. Um, it also has 190% enhanced damage, which does vary from 150 to 190%. So pretty big variable there on the enhanced. Uh, we also have 9 to 13 lifesteal per hit, which is also another very big variable. Uh, and in hell difficulty, 13% uh, is definitely going to be the preferable option. Uh, we also have a massive, ridiculous amount of mana return per kill of plus 15. And I think this is honestly the weapon's most endearing mechanic. Uh, 15 to mana after each kill is absolutely bonkers, especially when you're considering somebody who can kill like 20 cows in a second. Uh, you're talking about, you know, like 10 cows is 150 mana. Uh, 20 cows is a nice, uh, a nice what, 300 mana? So, you know, you can literally refill your mana like that. Um, we also have Replenishes Quantity on here, which of course is important, because if it didn't have Replenishes Quantity, well, the, the ethereal nature would uh, would definitely hurt this weapon overall. And then of course we also have the ethereal um, as an actual effect. So this is not just, oh, I found it as ethereal. No, this is, it always spawns ethereal. And um, so ethereal is actually one of the features. So what does ethereal do to an item? Well, number one, it makes it so you can't repair it. Number two, it increases the base damage by 50%. And, uh, and number three, it uh, makes it look a little ethereal. Like it's, it's kind of it's cool. You zoom in on it and it looks, it looks like kind of like ghostly. It's a little ghost glaive. Got the ghostliest of glaives. Now, um, who could get good use out of this? Well, quite honestly, the Javazon is really the main target, in my opinion. Uh, but I could theoretically see a um, Throwing Barbarian getting good use out of this in the recent patches. Uh, with the insane Life Leech and also the mana per kill, um, it could be really interesting. Also, spears tend to go a lot further than um, axes and, and whatnot. I'm not sure if you guys have ever actually tested this out yourselves. But when you throw a spear, um, it has a much further distance than a regular item, uh, throwing item. In fact, it goes pretty much off the screen, uh, whereas throwing axes and various things like that uh, do not tend to do the same thing. They tend to, like, just almost disappear almost immediately. Um, so one very nice benefit of the Wraith Flight is just simply that massive distance uh, because it is, of course, a spear. Uh, so if you were a barbarian and you were considering this and it didn't really look like maybe the most attractive 
item in the game. I think again about it just simply based on the distance that it goes, and you might actually utilize it in a second swamp set uh, with another spear, maybe two two spears or two wraith flights, or maybe a wraith flight and something else, whatever it is that you come up with. But uh, having the wraith flights allows you to have that distance, that range, which can certainly be a lot more useful than the axes um, or the throwing daggers, uh, which have a very limited range. Now, uh, this particular item doesn't really have a lot more going for it other than the mana per kill and the uh, the damage. Uh, I really wish it was a little bit faster because, um, unfortunately, be, you know, with the way that javelins work and the fact that they can't be socketed, um, you know, you can't put a shale rune in it, you can't put IAS jewels in it. You'd have to wear other equipment that would speed up your your attack speed in general uh, to make this more viable. And uh, and the damage on it, you know, isn't bad. 130 to 368 certainly is not bad damage. It just doesn't really attack fast enough to, to make up for the fact that it uh, it's so slow. Um, but that 15 to mana after each kill on this particular item is just kind of insane. Um, you, you have to think that not only does it have 15 mana after each kill, but you could theoretically combine this with several other sources. Uh, like, for instance, you could be using a Valkyrie Wing Helmet, um, and the Valkyrie Wing Helmet could have plus 5. Um, you could be utilizing a shield, for instance, uh, just to make sure that, the, like, like if this was your swamp two, you could be you could be like digging into this effect even further. Um, there are shields like uh, the Wall of the Eyeless, I think, and the Lidless that have plus five to mana after each kill as well. And you could socket them with a tier rune. You could socket a freaking Valkyrie Wing with a 15% IAS uh, plus three to mana after each kill jewel. So you're looking at 15, what? Uh, 20, 21, 22, 23, 20, oh, dang, 26, or well, well, no, 20, not 26, 25, and then 30. So you'd be looking at like 30 mana after each kill if you had it set up properly. You could even combine in a pair of silk weave boots for another plus five. So you'd be looking at like 35 to mana after each kill, and literally like in one throw. Of your light, your, you know, your 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 javelin. You would kill so many cows in one throw that it would just absolutely refill all your mana back up to full, and you would be golden. Um, let's take a look and see where we could potentially find a wraith flight ghost glaive if we wanted to get our hands on it. And uh, to do that, we're going to go over to Silo's Pen, uh, which has some very nice drop chance calculators. And uh, pink, there we go. And we're going to look up the Wraith Flight. Now, because this is an end game level unique, I'm going to go ahead and put in about 300% magic find because I feel like that's fair. Uh, we're also going to take a look at bosses first. And uh, notice our list is relatively small because this is an end game level unique item. Um, it only drops from Neilthak, Diablo, and Bale. Um, pretty good chance from Bale and Diablo, but um, still only three options there. Uh, let's take a look at Super Uniques. And again, we've got some pretty crappy options. Um, Frozenstein is not really easily farmable. Uh, Pindle at 1 in 10,050, which is a very easy to farm monster, but pretty crappy chance. Uh, Thresh Socket, about the same chance as Pindle. He's also pretty easy to farm. Uh, Grand Visor of Chaos, Infector of Souls, and Lord's ACs can all drop it at 1 in 15,000. Um, and it just kind of gets worse from there. Uh, it does look to me like your best bet is probably Held Diablo or Pindle Skin farming, uh, one or the other. You could also throw a Thresh Socket in with Pindle Skin. He's pretty easy to get to as well. Um, I think that's pretty much it for this particular item. Uh, it's not like a super special, like ridiculously good item. But it does have some interesting niche, niche mechanics. Um, most notably is the massive life steal and the massive mana steal, combined with the fact that it does a pretty large amount of damage. So not only does that 13% life steal really um, give you a lot of life steal, especially in combined with whatever other life steal objects you're wearing, like rings or or uh, armors or belts or whatever, like maybe string of ears, which we covered in the last video. Um, not only that, but it has very good damage, very good physical damage. So when it does hit a target, um, you're going to be getting a pretty large amount of life steal back, even sans the penalties. Um, and then the 15 to mana after each kill is going to make it very, very easy for you to keep your mana up, whether you are a throwing barbarian 
or a Javazon, uh, both of which will have a very good time with this particular item as far as mana consumption. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this as your main item for a Javazon. However, having it on your Swamp 2, perhaps with a mana recovery shield, uh, you know, like I said, like Lidless uh, would has, has plus 5, I believe, mana after each kill, or it might be plus 4. Uh, maybe using a Valkyrie Wing and some Silk Weave Boots. You could essentially uh, swap, use this, fill up your entire mana pool, swap back, and you might never need another mana potion again. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos. Um, even when we are flying into the ghost realm... And uh, if you'd like to keep watching my videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button.